regular school board meeting, Wednesday, September 13th, 2023. board meeting tonight. Thank you so much. We have a great turnout. We appreciate that. We love that when that happens. Um, we'll begin tonight uh, with a reverence by board member Danielle Wright. Uh, then board member Wade Hyde will do the flag salute pledge of allegiance and then we'll have the first part of our recognitions by board member Julie Taylor. Our Father in heaven, we are grateful to be gathered here tonight to work towards bettering the education and supporting the students and staff of Box Hill School District. Please help us to be good listeners and to um, understand any issues and make great decisions for the future of our students. Please help us to all <coughs> continue to care for our students and Guide them in what is best for their futures. And we say these things in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Everyone, please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. It's fun to have a full crowd here, and I think you're all here for good reason, so that's especially fun for us. So thanks for being here. Um, we have a couple of recognitions tonight. I'm actually going to add a third one in right at the beginning because I just found out about it this afternoon for one of our students at Box Elder High School. Dax Sumco was named the KSL, what do they call it? Um, Bold Player of the Week, prep football player. But what I loved about this article was it talks about what a humble, if you just represented all the characteristics of what good kids that we we have here in this district and he talks about anytime when they quote him in an article and I've watched several football games this year and it's true he always deflects the praise and says it's my team it's my offensive line and I just thought that was a great example and he does a lot of service and he's involved and and so anyhow we just like I said I don't have anything formal but just was um, saw that today and it was a great honor for him and represents our school and district well um, the two recognitions that we do have are uh, Kelby Jackson and Kristen Kendrick. Are they here at all? Okay. What I'm going to, uh, they were announced as, look at me, it's on my glass. Uh, teacher, they, they were selected in the fourth cohort of the Utah Teachers Fellows to join this cross-state leader network. So I'm just going to read a little bit about this because it's pretty, there are 20-ish um, people that were selected from all over the state to be in this, this cohort. And this is what, um, it's a nonpartisan nonprofit that connects classroom teachers with their peers and decision makers. The Utah program has been carefully designed to develop the competencies of great teachers, providing them with tools to engage their colleagues and generate solutions to education challenges. Um, teacher fellow educators, are, they remain full-time teachers in their schools and organizations and contribute approximately 10 hours each month to program activities including data collections, professional learning sessions, and partner meetings. And the, it says the application process is thoughtful and competitive. Mm -hmm. Educators who make it through the rigorous selection process demonstrate an exceptional willing, willingness to collaborate, persevere, take initiative and risks, and honor the perspectives of college, colleagues and decision makers. And so we just want to congratulate and recognize Kelby Jackson from Bear River High School and Kristen Kendrick from McKinley Elementary for being accepted into this cohort and part of this teacher fellows group. It's a great honor and I think they're going to do great things learning with their colleagues and we'll bring back and help our district as a whole. So we want to congratulate them. Is Kristen and Kelby here tonight? Thank you, Julie. Was that, was that everything? That's it. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, now we go on to our, uh, uh, we love this every year. We have this every year. This is one of our favorite things. Uh, these two companies are just so great to help the district out, and we just appreciate them both so much. And we will start with the Walmart grant presentation. And I don't know who's all doing this, so I apologize for that. 
tomorrow. But I recognize you because I've seen you before. So <laughs> thanks again. Thank you for having us. We appreciate it. Thank you to the board. Thank you to everybody. That All right. So yes, I, my name is Dawn DeVoe, and I'm the human resource manager at Walmart, um, the distribution center in Corinne. And I've brought, brought three of my great leaders with me tonight, and they're going to share a few words with you. Um, we just always love coming out to this event. We really are grateful for the board and the teachers, um, for what you guys do for the students, um, because those students grow up and end up becoming our employees. So thank you for everything you do. Um, I've got Seth Salmon, Bree Terry, and Christina Cruz, and I'm going to turn the mic over to them. I'm a little bit taller, so I'll go ahead and do this. <laughs> I do want to say, this is the first opportunity I've had personally to come here and, uh, and be a part of this, and it's just a huge honor. I think I can speak for all of us. It is really an honor to be here and be able to share this experience with you guys, give an opportunity for the young minds coming up to get the little bit extra that they need to really take on the challenges of the world, right? We have so many things that hit us as we go through life, and this is the moment, those early years that we really can impact them. I know the most impactful and influential people that I had in my life were the teachers in my life. Those people that really took me to really understand what was possible, what was uh, the challenges that I was going to face, but how I could face them and how I could be the person that I wanted to be. Um, something that really stuck with me as a kid and kind of growing up is uh, it's it's not always easy to do the right thing. In fact, it's easier to do the, the easy thing, but you'll never regret doing the right thing. You'll often regret doing the easy thing, and that's something that's really stuck with me. Never regret doing the right thing, often regret doing the easy thing. And you guys have the opportunity to really help our new generation know what the right thing is and to be able to tackle that. So thank you so much. I really do appreciate that and for everything you guys do out there. It's awesome. I'll show you giving you a summary. So this year we are awarding $10,500 total, and that went out to 12 different schools and 16 different grants that were funded with that money. So again, thank you to the teachers for all the work you guys have done. I'm known in all our meetings for always having one last thing. It carries into my personal life too. This year, as, a, as an addition, we asked our associates if they would like to go ahead and donate some school supplies for the teachers and the students. Mm. So we have two um, plastic tubs back there of just different donated stuff that's from our associates in the building. Everything from scissors and glue sticks and notebooks and pens and pencils and markers and all kinds of stuff. So we'll let you guys decide where the need is with that, but that's from our associates to say thank you for all you guys do. Check go to. <laughs> <laughs> right there, wait. Money. <laughs> He'll just give it to me, but that's all right. Yeah, yeah, we need a picture of that. I'll just give it to you. Do you want to get in? Don, get in. Don, get in there. That is so generous. Thank you so much. Thanks. Now we have our new core grant presentation, and is uh, Johnny Nissen and Quentin Pove? Are they both here? Okay, come on up. Thank you, gentlemen. I was wondering what you Like you said, my name is Quentin Pove. This is Johnny Nissen. Um, I didn't realize we're still. We were supposed to have a big production. <laughs> the talk prepared, he said, just show up. Tell him thank you. Um, but Jardy's been a lifelong um, box owner resident. I moved up when I was a, well, I moved up about 20 years ago when I got married um, from Weber County. And just want to let you guys know uh, how grateful. I have, I've got four little kids, well, not little anymore, <laughs> but I have four kids, two in high school, um, two in elementary school, and it's awesome to be able to send them to great schools with great teachers. Um, 
I don't know. You guys are on the front lines of a kind of a somewhat of a thankless job sometimes, and I just want you to know, as a parent, that we're very cool. Um, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. So it, it's awesome to work for a company that believes in giving back to its community, or to the communities where its um, employees call home. Um, Box Elder County, by far, is the we are the most residents in this county, so the court takes a lot of pride in being able to give back to the community. <coughs> over the last 10 years, we of course gave it over $200,000 to Box Elder County alone. Um, that's not including the donations for the football field up in Bear River and the projects that they've got going down here in Bridge City right now. Um, but it's awesome to work for a company that wants to give back. Um, instead of giving us a cool big check, they give us a whole bunch of certificates and awards. Um, what we're going to do is Johnny's going to go through the names and the amounts, what the projects are for. Uh, we'll try to keep it quick, but if you want to come up and grab this real quick when we call your name, um, we'll get out of your hair. We appreciate it. Thank you guys. Thanks for having us out. Um, as Quentin said very well, it's, it's an honor to be here. There's several faces that I either sat in your classroom, or unfortunately probably sat in the principal's office. <laughs> uh, but the Box Elder School District definitely has a, is special to me. Um, more in, I've had several family members, and one currently still working for the school district, and that being my mother at North Park Elementary. So uh, obviously Box Elder School District's been tremendous to me, and as has Newport. So we're, it's, we're, we're delighted to be here today, and, and we'll quickly read through these. You can hold your applause to the end, um, I won't read off the specific amounts, um, and then at the end we'll, we'll give a grand total and we'll go from there. So, the first coming from Bear River High School is Heidi Jensen and Kristen Hewlett for the scholarship boot camp. The next two specifically are with regards to Preston Ritchie, one being for the smart field control and anti static field tiles. The last of which from Bear River High School was Crystal Pugsley with her Pinewood Derby project. Would not mind an invite to that. Crystal Bucks is listening. Um, from Sunrise, we have Maddie Rinner Connect with her hands on learning in life sciences. Familiar face from Howard. The second Sunrise is Heather Watts and Leslie Friedall, a garden as a grand teacher, hydroponics school garden. From Barrett Middle School, we have Morgan Christensen with graphing calculators. Also, from Middle School, we have Nephew Ramirez learning the life skills uh, in lifetime sports. From ACYI, we have Jake Haynes with speed stacking cups for physical education. Next, we have Valerie Gates, Michelle Bowden, Penny Wallace, and Becky Henry with dinosaur fossil kits. Lastly, from ACYI, we have Kelly Hansen with first chapter Friday. That's from Kelly, so I'm not representing her tonight. <laughs> From ACHI, we have Turnin Dunmeyer with the Student Audio Enhancement for Math Engagement from Group. Also, Joe Thomas and Judd Sweet, Sweat, I apologize, with Skeleton Keys. From Central, we have Misty Curtis, High Interest Content for Struggling Readers. Also, we have Jill Roach with Math for Success, Manipulatives, and Fractions. From Discovery, we have Krista Holdman with STEM and a robotics program. From Building Elementary, we have Courtney Lamborn with Interactive and Math. Also from Building Elementary, we have Angela Christensen making math magical. From Garland, we have Libby Christensen adding STEM literature to our K-5 library. We also have Nicole Nelson, a 3D printer. Lastly from Garland, we have Angela Allen Buddy Barnett and Susan Lish with Super Stories for Super Kids. <laughs> From Golden Spike, we have Shaylin Eakins with STEM Connections. All of I mispronounced that. <laughs> From Lakeview, we have Leslie Young with Physical Education Equipment. We also have Kimberly Wilson with Make Us Genius. We have Kathy Williams with Full Day Kindergarten Hands On. From McKinley, we have Ashley Wise, Booby and Grooving in fifth. Caitlin Bott with Manipulatives. Kristen Kendrick, Jenny Marble, and Kim Detweiler with Breaking the Code. 
Ashley Anderson, Jamie Tyre, Danielle Southern, and Christy, Christine Bennett, excuse me, with Elkin and Bowles and Magnetic Wands reading and readiness activity set. From North Park, we have Holly Allen reading for everyone, and Heather Daly, 95% group phonics lesson library. From Park, we have Samantha Sproul, flexible seating for the classroom. <laughs> From Snowville, we have Jolene Ritchie, bots for the classroom. From Three Mile Creek, we have Emily Zito, Science Experiment Supplies. Also from Three Mile Creek, we have Michael Peterson, uh, Sparrow Bot Code. From Willard, we have Natasha Morgan with Math Manipulators. Also from Willard, we have Haley Kilmer, supporting speech language literacy for individuals in classrooms. Wrapping up here, we have Jason Udy with preschool testing materials. <coughs> and two for Linda Bourne, treatment equipment support for children with autism and environmental modifications for children with disabilities. That concluding the grants, a grant total of $23,551. Hey, thank you gentlemen for your generosity and new core. Thank you so much. Do appreciate it. Everyone who received grants tonight, we would appreciate it. We'd like to shake your hands as a board. So if you received a Walmart grant or a new core grant, please come up. We'd like to shake your hands before you leave, okay? Thank you. We do appreciate all you do. We might be here well. No more, no more exciting chatter and electricity in the room. Okay, we will continue. We now need a motion and a second to approve tonight's agenda. I'll move to approve tonight's agenda. I'll second that. Okay, Nancy Kennedy has made the motion and Connie Archibald the second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the agenda is approved. Okay, now we have another exciting thing. We need to we get to swear in our new student board member, Alyssa Lyman, tonight, and that's always a fun thing to do. So uh, Dave Roberts, I believe, is going to do that. Come on up here. Okay. You have to be by the mic, says Robert. <laughs> and I'm going to let you face the audience. How's that? Or we can just have right there. Great. Okay, I, I texted her mom and asked her permission to talk to Lisa beforehand to make sure that she was comfortable doing this. And she didn't have any questions. She said, I think I'm good. I'm like, wow. We picked the right person there. Okay. Turn her around so she can see so us. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> so I, Elisa Lyman. I, Elisa Lyman. I think she needs to raise her hand. Oh, yes. Oh, right. <laughs> okay. There you go. I, Elisa Lyman. I, Elisa Lyman. Having been appointed. Having been appointed. To the Office of Student Board Member for Box Elder School District to the position of student board member for Fox Elder School District. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support, obey, and defend. That I will support, obey, and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Utah. And the Constitution of the State of Utah. And that I will discharge the duties. And that I will discharge the duties. Of my office with fidelity. Of my office with fidelity. There you go. Great, you're done. You're done. Good job. Congratulations, Alyssa. We're thrilled to have you on the board. Thank you. So in visiting with Alyssa just here at the beginning, she's in FBLA and she's gone to nationals twice in, parli in parliamentary procedure. Oh, wow. So she's got this. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so we're excited. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I have to tell you a fun thing. I, I I'm, was talking to a person the other day and her daughter was our board member probably 15, 20 years ago. And she said, do they still do that? And I said, yeah, we still do that on the board. And she says, that was the funnest thing my daughter did all her senior year. She absolutely <laughs> loved it and learned so much from it. So hopefully you'll do the same. Well, so you'll so have a good excited. experience, OK? <laughs> Thank you for serving. We appreciate it. OK, uh, we have no public comment tonight. 
So uh, we will go right into our action items. And our first one is approval of Sunrise High School Community Council exemption. And uh, that's Keith Beacon. Thank you. So uh, this is a, a continuance of what we've done last year. As you probably heard earlier, uh, it's not that uh, Sunrise High School, Mr. Jackman and the staff are not trying to reach out and connect with <coughs> families. It's the inconsistency and the, um, I don't know what the right word is, the intervals of when people come and go is so unique that try to have somebody stay on for two years uh, is, has been problematic. There's certainly opportunities to communicate with parents, get insight, but in a more formal state. So per the, uh, per the policy uh, of, uh, of the Utah Code, it does allow for a, a school board to make an exemption. And so tonight we're asking uh, that uh, the board would uh, accept this request for a school community county exemption for the 23-24 school year. Do we have any questions or anything for for Keith? I move that we uh, grant the exception. I second. Okay. Um, Karen Cronin has made the uh, the motion, and who did the second? I'm sorry. Oh, Danielle Wright did the second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion passes. Um, I, I've been asked to do this one as well. Okay. Um, Megan okay. is at a conference uh, this week, and oh, okay. I got an email from her tonight that says, hey, as long as, you know, anyway. I, and I wish she was here because uh, of the kind of effort that uh, she has put forward here. And I just wanted to have this up. And don't ask me why there's yellow, okay? Can I just, or whatever color that is, green? Anyway, we are really trying hard in our district to create an environment where harassment and discrimination in all of their varieties are uh, something that we, we foster in terms of making sure and ensuring that this is not happening. We have a variety of kids that come from different backgrounds and uh, you know some in protected classes and we just feel like it's a, a point in our district where we need to have a little more firm stance of how we feel that every kid uh, regardless of race religion gender etc etc can come to school not be harassed not joked about uh, and we feel like a position statement to start this off uh, which when and then again uh, Megan, with her new role as our Director of Equity and Student Services, is going to continue to lead this, uh, uh, this, uh, this charge, which uh, we feel great about, and uh, we want to continue to get it all the way down to the kid level, certainly, and also parent level, so that they understand that our schools are safe places. And uh, they're not always perceived as safe places, but we believe they can get better and that they are safe, but we have areas to improve. And so a position statement to kind of start where we want to keep moving forward and having your support of this uh, would be uh, the recommendation. Um, again, Megan's done the majority of the work. She could give you better, answer your questions and so forth. But uh, if any questions you have, I certainly can pass that on to Megan. But this is a starting point of where we'd like to go. Okay, thank you, Keith. We appreciate that. Um, are there any questions or anything for Keith? Keith, just a question, and if you don't know, that's fine. You can um, ask her and have her pass it on how she developed the, what the yeah, process. Yeah, so she's to a part of. Uh, there are equity directors across the state of Utah, and uh, she has jumped right in the middle of meeting with each of those equity directors. Uh, she's using resources from the State Board of Education, uh, obviously and uh, you know things from USBE, Utah Code, and we just have not had anything really firm. Uh, in our policies, we don't say, uh, I was just thinking on the second uh, or third paragraph here where it says, consequently, you know, prohibits all acts of harassment, discrimination, bullying, cyberbullying, hazing, retaliation, abusive behavior, but it does not say uh, these attributes encompass factors such as race, color, national origin, gender, disability, religion, gender identity, sexual orientation. That is not written in our policy. Well, those words don't show up. We've got to get them in our policy. We've got to uh, teach our uh, students, uh, our staff, 
our families that this is what we believe in and we're going to try all our best to, to ensure that this environment exists in each of our schools. So, I think, so will this then will this then become policy, or is right now just a statement of belief? And Steve, or you might know a little bit more about or? this. What I understand, we our policy needs to be updated and improved, okay. and or created, especially specifically for discrimination. We have bits and pieces that are in all of the different policies, mm -hmm. but we felt like it wasn't firm enough, and so. There is going to be a development of a policy. It will run through the policy committee. But this is kind of the basis of where we wanted to start and then move forward with a, a more firm policy that uh, states expectations and uh, consequences and all of those things uh, that we're trying to um, promote. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so I just have... Um, superintendent sent out an email with the president. Has that presentation been given to all students yet, or no? Is that it, still it, it's actually, I sent it out today because mm -hmm. Megan um, shared it. She shared the um, PowerPoint with all principals last week in principals meeting. We then discussed it. We being Keith, Heidi, Joe, and I, basically, and we decided we'd like her to put her face and do the vocals on it. Like and that. so everybody gets the exact same message. Yeah. Uh, our concern is, is even though we feel strongly our adults will do a good job, uh, we just didn't want to make yeah. sure that. So this is going to be going out. We're hopeful to get it out by October 1st. We're encouraging principals to have everybody see it. Okay. Uh, staff, students, and um, and and. I watched make it sure today with yeah. her narration. I thought that was a really good call. And I to did send have that her out. do that, get the same message yeah. in very yeah. professional way it was done. So, yeah. so it's, it's, yeah. it's very, it's, so I'm pretty excited that. about it because we do have a problem. Um, this, I'm, I'm glad Heidi Joe just told me this. So the secondaries, I sent it out yesterday. And I've asked yeah. between now and um, by the end of the month that that is shown to, in every class. Now, when I say every class, not six times, but every first hour, in the first hour, every kid's going to get this. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's about 14 point something point four yeah. minutes 14 anyway uh heidi joe just let me know that megan's making a different video kind of with different words a little more age appropriate for k5 oh. but the 612 it did go out that's the one you probably saw and so this is again a movement we're just trying to say hey look we've got to get our hand there's just yeah. a lot of uh just kidding just joking yeah i was i didn't mean it and that we're stuff, friends. We're friends. yeah, or, or we're friends. Um, there's just things out there that we've got to, and again, it's not just kids. I mean, it's going to have to be a community of this is what we believe in. And, and so having your support, and we're going to continue to move down yeah. this, you know, route. Well, and I was kind of shocked at the, maybe I shouldn't be, but the, the statistic that 100% either disagreed or strongly disagreed with the, whatever that statement was that we feel Basically, we feel safe at school based on everything, or people get along. And so there is a real need. There is a real need. And I think there's a lot of this just kid, like kids just aren't thinking. They're just making comments that are just not necessary and that are not. I have kids, and I'm like, what are you? Don't stop. This is not okay. It's not okay. So I think just saying it and being blatant, and this is very clear about what it is and what is not expected. So thank you for all, and Megan, for all the work that she's done on that. I think that's really good. Exactly. Cool. Megan did a super job. If, if you have not had the chance to look at the PowerPoint, I know it came out this afternoon. The superintendent sent it to us. Please do, because it's, it's awesome. It really is a great job, great thing. And Megan did a great job. So, so I guess I better make an official statement okay. that you know, we had asked that the board would accept this harassment-free, discrimination-free position statement, which would be the basis of policy in the future and uh, activities and uh, things moving forward. So. Okay, great. Do we have a motion in a second? President, I'll make a motion that as a Board of Education, we approve this evening the harassment-free and discrimination-free statement and action plan is presented. I'll second. Okay, uh, Connie Archibald has made the motion and Brian Smith a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion passes. And. Uh, we're going to go over our organizational chart, I know, in just a few minutes, but um, I wanted everyone to know officially tonight uh, that um, Keith now is our assistant superintendent of secondary teaching and learning, 
And then Heidi Joe, who's going to present next, is our Assistant Superintendent of Elementary Teaching and Learning. So I wanted to make sure that's all correct. Um, so we'll go on with you, Heidi Joe, on the approval of the updated TSSA framework. Okay. okay? Uh, so when the framework first came out, the board approved it several years ago. And at the time, it was recommended by the state that 25% of those funds could be taken off the top at the beginning to help with teacher retention and the increases in salary. So that was established however many years ago, by uh, seven or so. Um, they also said at the time that you could pull off 5% for um, appreciation for students and teachers, rewards, incentives, things like that. So like today, um, Mrs. Heslop shared how she and Mrs. Eakins have both done dinner on us for the night and you could take home a Papa Murphy's. So that 5% will allow them to do things like that or to have parties for students or rewards. So we wanted to make sure that we added that 5% in there. We've also, because we have so many funds, we would like to help the special education program. I called and talked to the people at the state that are over this um, last year about doing that, and they said that we could allocate 25% of that to help out special education so that in those buildings they have the paraprofessional support that they need in order to support those teachers and classrooms. Um, so that's the main adjustment that we want to make here is that 25% going to special education. Um, that still allows Principals, 50% control in the buildings divided up equally, and um, this year there was an increase of $32 per student that we were able to give them even with making those adjustments. So I recommend that the Box Elder School District Board of Education approve the amendments to the Box Elder School District Teacher and Student Success Framework as submitted. Okay, thank you, Heidi Show. Any questions? Yeah, I have a question. When you said it's distributed equally, is that per student? So that per the, student. the yep. schools that have the more students give more money. Mm -hmm. And we do it based off of last year's October 1 count. The state kind of recommends the average daily attendance or membership. And that was really a hard number to pin down last year. Um, we couldn't really quite get that exactly where we needed it to be. So we like to just go off of October 1 counts. With that, I make a motion that we accept the uh, TSSA framework recommendation changes. Okay. We have a um, motion by Karen Cronin. Do we have I'll a second? second. Okay. Second. Julie Taylor uh, has made the second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion passes. Now we go on to our approval of our updated special education handbook, and Catherine Al Allen, our special education director, is here to do that. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you for your time this evening. Um, every year for special education, we have to relook at our policies and procedure manuals. The state also looks at theirs every year. So what we have done is aligned our manual along with the states. So some of the changes that were made are mostly our vocabulary, language, they had so many minor little changes, they did not send a red line this <laughs> year through it. <laughs> they send us a two-page summary of all of the different changes. So we just uh, aligned ours directly with what the state has done. So I, um, unless there are questions that you have for me, I am proposing that you accept our policy and procedure manual. So just a question, as you went through them, is there anything that you didn't agree with or is everything pretty much the way you would like it? Everything, well, well there's a lot of things <laughs> I wouldn't like. <laughs> no, it, it's pretty well in line with what we need to do. They actually cleaned up some language that they needed to do. So um, in special education, we have to follow the federal guidelines of IDEA. And there was some language that Utah State had kind of messed with a little bit that made it really messy for us in the district. So with them cleaning up their language, it actually made it a little better for us. So I'm actually kind of happy that they've made some of these changes. Okay. Thank you, Catherine. Any other questions? Okay, do we have a, a motion and a second? I'll move we approve the updated special ed handbook as presented this evening. And I did learn out what child find is. <laughs> I called Catherine to figure what the heck that was. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, Nancy Kennedy has made the motion, and Tiffany Summers the second. All in favor say aye. 
Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion passes. You're good, Catherine. You. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, now we will go on to our information items, uh, starting with our cybersecurity with Casey Lillenquist and uh, Robert Gordon, who is our IT director. As Casey and Robert come up, I just want to make mention, and I think after tonight's presentation, you'll have a greater understanding for the battle that's going on out there 24-7, 365 of people trying to get inside of our system. And Casey is the main um, person that's overseeing that firewall. And Robert, of course, is his uh, supervisor. But it, it is really amazing to, to know what's going on out there and what they're trying to do. So go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, so yeah, we're, we're just uh, looking to kind of give an update on what's out there and what uh, what we're facing and the hurdles that we're trying to overcome um, as a district and as a technology department. Um, so uh, we were asked just to take a little bit of time and look at the, the cyber threat landscape. Um, so one thing, uh, the cyber threat landscape overall industries has increased um, and it continues to increase every year. Um, between 2021 and 2022, there was about a 38% increase in the number of cyber attacks across all industries. So it's a huge threat, it's growing, um, and in particular um, in K-12. So unfortunately, um, we are getting more and more, uh, sorry, one sec. We're getting uh, hit more and more with this. Um, let's see. Oh. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> he says that because that's usually his role. <laughs> yeah. I'll go hands off here. So it's a little tough to see, um, but if you, if you turn your attention to the graphs below, you can see the top line is the education line. Um, the three graphs at the bottom show three different types of cyber attacks and, uh, and where we are uh, based on other industries as well. So we're top in these three categories, and it seems to be each category, education again and again and again, is, to, is on the top of those. So the, um, one of them is malware attacks, one of them is intrusion attempts, um, to the network, and then one of them is Internet of Things malware attempts as well. So things like refrigerators, thermostats, um, Internet of Things is, is those type of those smart type TV. of devices, smart TVs. Yes. Um, so and those attacks play into something like the larger graph here, which is a, a ransomware or um, an extortion type attack. And so we're targeted for extortion in particular. Ransomware is a big target um, for K-12. And so just to explain ransomware real quick. That's, uh, that's where uh, it's, a, it's a piece of malware um, or a computer virus. Um, somebody gains access to the network or your computer and then installs this piece of malware. And what it does is it encrypts all your files. So it takes our security tools, kind of works them against us, um, encrypts all our files with a special key that would unlock it. And then they take that key and they hold it ransom. Um, so what they'll do is they'll get into the network. They'll get one computer. They'll try to spread to as far and wide in the network as possible, get your backups your computers, get to your servers, encrypt them all once they feel like they have a good foothold, and then um, extort you to unlock your computers with that key and, uh, and charge, you, charge you a fee. So, um, Is another term for fee blackmail, basically, is what you're saying? <laughs> blackmail. That, that's, yeah. that's what it is, exactly, right? Yep. It's blackmail. Extortion. 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 Ransom. Yep. They want a ransom for that encryption key. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So um, why us? Why school districts? Um, <laughs> That's the next thing. It doesn't seem like we have anything that they want, right? Um, some of the reason is we have a large budget, um, but we have to take that budget. We have to split it out for so many different things. And so we don't have a lot of budget for things like IT security. And, uh, and so we have smaller IT teams um, than somebody like a bank or a credit union or, you know, some of the other industries. And so we're seen as, uh, as having weaker security posture. Um, so we, we may not be able to afford some of the, some of the tools, some of the people, personnel to, to protect. So we're seeing as kind of low-hanging fruit, if you will. So that's one reason. Um, but we still have that large enough budget that they could come after us for hundreds of thousands, if not millions, in some cases, for the ransom. Um, because they will bring us to a halt, you know, with, if we can't use our computers or, you know, everything stops. And, and not only that, um, they've taken it a step further now. They get in, they get your data. They pull it out, and then they hold that data ransom too. Um, so even if you can recover from backups, 
you have a good plan in place, if they have your data, they're saying if you don't pay, then we're going to release the data, we're going to post it publicly. Um, so that's another way that they're coming after us. Um, even more recently, um, we've seen that uh, entities that refuse to pay and still can recover, um, then those threat actors will go over after the individuals in particular. There was a, a, a therapy organization um, where they got the therapy notes on their patients, and they wouldn't pay, and so they went after the individual patients. Um, so just kind of an idea of what their tactics are. Um, but that's, that's why us, we're, we're a little weaker, lower-hanging fruit. We have a large enough budget they can still extort us. And, and we have lots of, a, lots of data on kids. And, uh, and kids' data is a little more and higher. Employees. And employees. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. But, it, you know, we think about our kids and as parents. Um, we want to do anything we can to protect our kids. And kids' data almost is more worth more and easier to extort than, than our own, you know, because we want to protect those kids. So, so yeah, that's why us. Um, next, I've got an example of a school district that went through an attack like this. And Robert, Robert has a good example. He's going to run us through. Yeah. So this is my example. I don't know, Keith, if you got my link and you can, you can it's the same link, but if you can open that in a browser, because then you'll be able to see a lot more. <laughs> we'll accept it. Say confirm. <laughs> But while Steve t stole my thunder just a little bit, um, I have, hopefully he can get this going, this Google Slides um, that I'm borrowing from another district. We have Casey. Casey is a security analyst for our district. When I came to the district in 2018, so nearly five years ago, there were very, there weren't districts that had a security analyst. We had one. We had one because somebody hacked into our SIS and change the home page. They had no idea what they got into other than they changed the home page so that we noticed, right? We got them out. It wasn't too big of a deal. But that scared us enough to say we need somebody that's not just putting out fires because a lot of times that's what we get to do as IT people. Casey's role is preemptive. It's to prevent that fire from ever happening which is way harder than being a firefighter. I want you to think about that for a minute, right? You get that call, my computer doesn't work, this doesn't work. Being preemptive is way, way harder. If he doesn't, if he doesn't have this, this will be you know, kind of short. But this is actually a district in Pennsylvania. It wouldn't, okay. I don't know why. I've, I've got it, but the, the slides are, are going to be way more powerful. If I emailed it to you. There should be a link directly into, into, your, into your email. So this is one of the... This is one of the... So this, this is... This is multi-factor authentication. It's real. <laughs> Open it. It looks bad. It's okay. Now, how do you know that wasn't better safe than yeah. sure. That's what. This is true. <laughs> okay, come on. I will say this: when I came here a year before Robert, um, it was actually frustrating for a lot of people because we did have such protection for outside people to come in. Our vendors would come in to train us, and it was really. A tight firewall to be able to even get those guys in and so I appreciate that but it was hard so okay good deal there's always that balance of security and functionality exactly good point. are you am I able to click for you maybe okay so this was a conference session that I attended while I attended the ISTE conference Julie was there at the same time and what does ISTE stand for you International Society for Technology and Education. Okay? Sorry, acronyms, acronyms. And, and this is what I like about this presentation is this is an IT director and um, an ed tech specialist that are just like us. This is a school district. Uh, they're a little bit smaller than us, but not by much. Yes, they're in, in um, central New Jersey. They're a suburban school district. We have 12,000 plus students, they have 7,300, but 
Staff-wise, we're close in numbers. Um, we have a few more schools. We're definitely more spread out. As far as their um, field techs, we're, we're right at that same number. We have, we have five. And uh, we have a few more engineers, right? An SIS person that helps us out. Very, very similar, okay? Um, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna kick, kind of click through some, but let's just set the stage. So Casey talked about how they infiltrate the system, right? And they do it without your knowledge, without anybody's knowledge. And then they wait. In this case, for this district, it was Sunday evening, the last night of spring break. Nobody had been looking at those systems for a week. And that gave them time to encrypt everything. And then, then they let them know um, at 8.35 p.m. they got an alert. Hey, your SIS is offline. Okay, let's finish watching this or we'll finish the, our, our, our game night. 30 minutes later, the IT director gets on and says, uh, I can't get to the SIS homepage. So he VPNs in from home to see what's going on. And at 9.15, the SIS, so the SIS wasn't working, the homepage was replaced with this. Okay, all right, we got a problem here. What is this? So he looks it up, this is a type of ransomware. Okay, targeting public entities. Now we've already talked about what it is, so he's like, but he knew what ransomware was, so he's like, okay, now what? 9.16, panic mode. I know exactly how he would feel. What do you do? Where do I go? So he starts to gather his team together to, to, to remote in. Hold it, we got an infection. Is it gonna traverse, traverse our VPN network? Could it come back to our computers here? Um, nothing's responding. What do we do? Nothing's responding. Uh-oh. Oh, by the way, our senior system engineer, he's taken off for the week. Okay, 943. And that's pretty common. Yeah. No. It seems to be Friday afternoon, someone's going on vacation. Sure. We come back on Monday morning, the wireless is down. Donnie just called in sick. What's going on? Okay, this is the way things work, right? 943. He calls the business administrator and the superintendent. Okay. All right. Well, We'll talk about some of their roles. They do an operations team. I'm, I don't know about you, but at 10 o'clock, I'm wanting to get into bed. I'm not wanting to be up all night, okay? They still don't know the extent of the damage. They're trying to figure out what's going on, looking for the list of infected systems, but they still don't know. They don't know how it happened, all right? For the next hour, they trudge along. They reach out for assistance, so, um, we have been in communication with our Utah cybersecurity. The other day, um, Casey met with our multi-state agency um, at, a, at a meeting that UEN provided, and we actually are getting a personal one-on-one -on -one with an FBI agent tomorrow. Uh, but they, they had to start calling these people and figuring out who these people are. Remember what I said about Casey being preemptive? It's, it's because he's preempted that we have one of these meetings and we're wanting to find out who these people are ahead of time so that we're ready to deal with this when it comes. Superintendent, he worked really hard to let the school board know and contacted the unions and other things. And the other thing that, that the superintendent can do is to keep people off of the IT director's back so that he can get the job done and try to figure out where it's at, right? You call him, don't call me, because I'm already gonna be up to my eyeballs and alligators, okay? Once you find out. Um, the business administrator, he took care of the insurance and uh, talking about the internet and a couple of other things. And I'm gonna kind of skip through this, but that's something, you know, everybody plays a role. And even, well, yesterday we talked with our insurance, our cyber insurance, and we included Dave Roberts on that so that he could ask his pertinent questions as well. 
they had to find out how's this going to affect the HVAC systems, any, any other of those systems that are working on the network. Um, okay, technology integration. Um, oh, the technology integration coordinator. This is our David Blake, our ed tech specialist. What did he do? He ran interference and he tried to communicate the messages out as much as possible. Okay, 1130, operations teams having a meeting. Uh, this would be our NetOps team analyzing what's going on, deciding, okay, what can we do? Let's go through and start figuring out which systems are affected. In this case, it was their Windows servers. And the likeness to our setup is scary. This spread through their Windows servers and that's what we, we have. So they had to start powering off their Microsoft Windows systems, okay? Um, yeah. Um, they started shutting down the network based on what the FBI person recommended at 12.15 a.m. Um, by 12.48, school's gonna be closed. So, how do you notify them? How do you notify them, right? What systems do we have now that we can push this out and can we, can, can we still get into those systems? Um, think about this. We took, Keith, last year, huge amount of time deciding how we're going to handle snow days. Boom, we just had a snow day with no snow. But that's what we're doing, and, we're going to have to, and we have to come up with that same kind of plan, what's going to happen next for us, notifications. Would ThrillShare work? So ThrillShare should work, yes, because most of us have an outside connection. You know, well, it links through Google. So right now, we should be good. So they sent out those messages, 1249, boom. One minute, I mean, the, the, they got ballooned. You can see this one says 1500, later on it'll be 10,000 plus above that. So his phone just blew up, and there's no way you're gonna go through 5,500 messages and try to answer that. So you've gotta have somebody running interference and communicating that our chief communications person here is Steve. Um, one o'clock, another operations team meeting. Again, I'm going through their scenario because we can learn so much from it and try to, to shore up our systems and be prepared. Um, the ser server room was physically completely powered down. So our data center, shut her down, right? It takes time to reboot that thing. Um, the, clo the quickest we've ever done after a power outage and our backup power failed was three hours. The quickest, just to get the bare minimum ready to go for school. Um, they disconnected the outside internet completely, um, then waited for a direction from the insurance carrier, and, and then they, oh, well, we have an air gap. Let's see what that's going to do for us, okay? 2 to 6 a.m., finally, let's get some rest. Except how do you think the IT director slept? <laughs> Not very well, right? 6 a.m., rise and shine, get back with the, the NetOps team, let's go over this, where are we at? Turns out it's all Windows computer on the domain were infected. Uh, unsure about off-campus computers. Teacher took their laptop home over the spring break. Not sure what's going to happen there. Um, how are we going to do school <coughs> if we don't have computers that are ready to go? Uh, send out a message to all staff members at 656. Uh, do not use your device because we don't know what's happened to it. So please don't VPN so in, they were don't using connect. Their device to get the message. But somebody had to use a device, but does it, does it fall back to now I'm using my personal devices? Good question. 15,000 messages now in the inbox in the morning when people wake up and see that. Okay. Um, yeah, contact finally got in with the insurance company, uh, waiting for some further direction. Um, so, you know, there's just so many call with the cyber attorney. What's, what are our rights? What are we going to do? Um, yep, we already know about these guys. And we learned this yesterday talking to our insurance broker. <laughs> we deal with these things every day. These insurance companies, that they're in business because of this, and they deal with them all the time. Oh, yeah, we know what, what Ryuk is. This is how we handle them, right? We could be down for days, week, longer, set up a forensic team to figure it out, figure out how we're going to get back online again. OK? 
okay? Another operations team meeting at eight. Um, this was their kind of, their silver lining. I don't know if this would happen to us. Their air gap was the 30th of March. They went off on spring break. They had three days before spring break that they lost data. That was all that they lost because an air gap means I've got, I've got everything backed up to this storage device, but it's not connected to the internet, right? The hackers couldn't get to that. And, but then they found out that AirGap was not designed to restore in a rapid manner. It's gonna take days to do. You know, they bought a bunch of hard drives and it took for hours just to copy the data back off to try to, because you, you don't wanna corrupt your only source of data, so you wanna make a copy of it. So if you only have one copy, you really don't have a backup. That's been my saying for years. So superintendent gets a call with the athletic director. Uh, can we do sports? What can we do? You know, how, how are you going to handle that in any off-campus or on-campus events? You don't have internet. So all school activities scheduled for that Monday the 12th got canceled because they just didn't know what they didn't know yet. Okay, another, another NetOps meeting. Anyway, I'm gonna go on. Time to prioritize. What are you gonna bring up first? Right, we need transportation, we need buses, we need, hold it, payday's coming up. We got, we're gonna have a bunch of employees not happy if we, if we can't get the payroll system up. So just so many decisions that you have to make so fast and so many things that they bring down. And when we talk about time lost, we're in the business of, of educating kids, but we lose that time um, and we lose money for employees that can't do their job. We've had small, small internet outages and it's like in our office, you know, people are twiddling their thumbs if they don't have the internet. And that used to never be, but we just depend on it so much Something that we depend on that much, we have to protect. Um, speaking with counsel, uh, they recommended EDR, which is endpoint. Uh, endpoint detection. It yeah. has to do with pulling logs from each individual endpoint and, and evaluating if it's infected and if it's going to be safe to put back online or to recover from. So they want their tools, the, um, the investigation firm want their tools on the boxes. So that's something that, like, if we could, if we could plan ahead a little bit, and the reason why we're doing this is planning, um, getting with our insurance agent, making sure what we have on our system already is already there, so we don't have to try and deploy in the middle of an incident, um, trying to get these plans together. Yeah, an EDR solution that's already working would be would, would save us a lot of time. They consult with uh, the um, cyber insurance. The council is, we're not going to recommend paying. You know, gosh, this. Let's just pay the ransom and get back to business. They don't recommend paying. Um, so anyway, they start making plans. What can we do to get things back online and to get students learning? Uh, the key thing that they, that they did, I'm gonna kind of skip ahead. They shared some things with their staff and information. By, it wasn't until 9.45 that night that they said, yeah, we're gonna, we, can do it, we can pivot to a virtual. And they did virtual the next four days of the week, so Tuesday through Friday, and and they couldn't still couldn't bring things back up, but they were able to get kids back in the school by the following Monday. So they had one full week of snow days, which is actually really good. Um, yeah. Average is um, one to two weeks down um, from that. So trying to right. back, and then and that's just to get. Um, continued recovery, um, those other systems, trying to get everything back online to make months. So we're running at a diminished capacity for quite a while. Okay, so a couple more things. I think you were going to talk to a couple of these slides. Yep. Yep. Okay, oh, I'm going to let yeah, you. Right here, yeah. yeah, we have yeah, a couple one, of these. One thing just to highlight on these is uh, is you are getting pulled in three different directions. Um, so, so you guys, superintendent, um, the school district as a whole, wants school back in and learning back up and running as soon as possible, right? But then we've got uh, federal agencies that want the law enforcement. They're trying to get the bad guys. They're trying to catch them. So they're trying to get the logs. They want your servers. They want to make sure they get everything 
Um, you know, and that doesn't necessarily go hand in hand with recovery when we're trying to put the stuff back on. Um, and so there's going to be some conflict and and trying in between these these different people. And then you know you've got our, our cyber insurance um, that wants to reduce the damage and liability as much as possible. They don't want to pay um, you know pay as little as possible. So you know the quicker we get back up, the the more it's going to cost. So. Um, just, I thought that was really interesting coming from their perspective, getting pulled in those three different directions, I think is worth considering and something that we could maybe plan for um, ahead of time. So are we good to jump back to the other? I think we are. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So, so looking at that, what, what are some things that we can do and some things that we are doing? Um, one of the big initiatives we have as an IT department this year is working um, hard on our incident response plan. Um, a few things we've done on, down that road, um, our, we've had a cyber type tabletop exercise with our IT department and Box Elder leadership um, to kind of identify what those holes are. We had a third party come in, ask us questions. This third party has helped other people recover from ransomware incidents, um, so they've seen they've seen this um, play out. They knew what questions to ask. They knew what pain points they felt. So it was interesting to sit down with them and have them ask us questions and how we would respond and, and try to identify what holes we have. And, and I think that was valuable enough that if we could continue those throughout the year, it would be valuable as we, as we lay this plan out. Um, other things we do, more security awareness trainings. We're all required to do our GCN training every year. Um, and then we do our, our phishing, which um, is the email, email scam training, right? It's, we do. The, it's the email scam that the board got on the airplane as they landed yeah, that was for a national training. school board. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was April 1st. I think it was. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, yep. Yep. And, and really what that does, it, it, it shows people that it's out there. Um, and, and then we have the opportunity to follow up and show what to look for. And then how to report that. Because if we get that quick, we can minimize the damage, hopefully. You know, and, and you know, try and stop it from going further. Block that site with the bad link that's, that's grabbing those credentials. Because phishing is the number one vector for um, threat actors to get in and, and you know, use ransomware against us. So, um, so yeah, we're more security awareness trainings to come throughout the year, um, especially around phishing. And then um, Robert touched on this, growing our network of technical contacts with MS SIAC, CISA um, at the federal level, TCC meetings, which is local, K-12, other. We have a TCC security team. Um, each security individual from every school district we get together and talk every other month. Talk about coordinators council. Thank you. DCC. I didn't know, so I wasn't going to say. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but it's really good to get together with the other people that are in this boat with us, seeing the same problems, using some of the same vendors. What's working for them? What's not working for them? What's working for us? What's not working for us? And and it's really nice to gain that community. So we're working harder on that. Um, and hey, then let me add one more. Let go, me go ahead. Hit the next bullet myself. Utah has a, um, a hacker conference called the Utah Senate. We will send eight of our employees there this year. Uh, it's four days of intense um, puzzles that you're trying to solve. And you're trying, really what you're doing is you're getting into the mind of the hacker. Mine's looking at me. These guys pick locks. Huh. They solve puzzles. They're, they're giving these challenges. And then there's lectures for leadership like myself to be able to learn more about what's going on out there and staying on top of it. If you're not staying on top of your game, you're going to get infiltrated. So um, these guys are always doing that, and it's, it's amazing the skills that they're developing when they go. It's really good. And it's called Utah Saint. It's called Utah Saint because, because they're all white hack hackers instead of black hack hackers, right? They're all doing it for the good of people rather than good of themselves. And, and I will tell you, the first time I went, I couldn't believe how late these guys stay up. We're talking 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning, working on these projects, soldering, and I locked myself out of my room. Casey's like, oh, wait, wait, I got this. I can get you back in. And he pulls out a roll of film strip, feeds it up and over the door, and he's trying to get the handicap handle. And I'm like, what in the world? With permission. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was standing right there. I went down to the lobby, got a key, walked back up. He's still playing it. Fine, I'm done. <laughs> yep, yep. And, and you know, it, you do things like that, you understand where your risks are. Um, 
you know, if we're if we're spending all this money on on the cyber side of protecting our servers, but then we leave the door unlocked, it's kind of silly. So there is a there is a method to, and a reason behind those physical security things as well. Um, but moving into um, so so the first two sections are really about planning and what we're doing as far as planning. Um, one one thing we're working on as far as shoring up what we already have is rolling out more multi-factor authentication to more of our staff. We had a big push last year and got it on uh, multi different parts of our staff already are using multi-factor for different pieces. Um, and so we're looking to extend that further and hope to have um, all of staff on multi-factor um, by the end of the year. That's what you saw come up for Keith. Yep. That showed up on the screen. It then goes to your phone and says you're being, your boom, and you hit accept. So it, yep. One factor could one. be your password. You go to a website, one, one factor is your password. And then say the site doesn't like you, you're logging in from a new location you've never been there from for some reason they'll be like all right well tell us what security code we just sent your phone your email I, I bet you guys have all seen something like that that would be the second factor they're saying something you know which is your password and something you have which is your phone they they have your phone number they send that code you've got two factors two layers to really show you are who you say you are and that's protecting us from like a, a data breach getting someone's username and password or or something like that and then then they have to have that phone as well which this new jersey school district that was how they got infiltrated. It was a student account that somebody got into. They were able to get into it, the student account, and then find credentials for a teacher, and it just ramped up from there. But they just tapped at the smallest little piece to get in. So some of this was already already covered in the in the other attack, so I'm gonna run through it real quick. But some considerations to leave you with. What would we do as a school district? Would we pay the ransom? Would we not pay the ransom? Um, there's pluses and negatives to both. If we pay it, um, we may get our data back quicker. There's some entities that don't get it. It gets corrupted. Um, but these guys, um, they are sophisticated. They have customer support lines to teach you how the, you call up. You'd be like, how, how do I get Bitcoin to pay you? And they'll walk you through that whole step. Um, supposed to have excellent customer service. They want it to work. <laughs> you know, they, they really want it to, to be able to unencrypt because when they infect the next guy, they want to know they want to be able to show that, hey, you paid us and we were able to deliver. And so they, they have, they're pretty, they're pretty organized. Um, yeah, there's several, there are, yeah. there are, they are getting cracked down on. Some of it uh, is, a lot of it's coming from other countries. And so then you're, you're dealing with that issue, you know, where some other countries don't care as long as you're not attacking fellow countrymen <laughs> so much, you know. So then it becomes an FBI and, yeah. But they are cracking down the best they can. But we do see it come from, um, out of country more often than not so yeah one consideration we have if we don't pay um, that's what's recommended by FBI CISA they don't want to negotiate you know with terrorists they want they want to uh, to discourage the extortion they want to stop it from happening by paying we're encouraging it so um, yeah and if we decide not to pay then we at least know what we're getting into we know we're gonna have to recover from backups so we're gonna have to come up with a way to recover so making that decision ahead of time is a lot easier than trying to deal with it during the incident um, then, then another thing, what are our most critical services, like, like Robert touched on, what's critical to IT may not be what's critical to the business department rolling out paychecks. Um, you know, it may not be the transportation department trying to get kids from one place to another. So coming together as a district um, and deciding what's critical, what we need to focus on first, and, uh, and really get an idea of how long they can be down and what those hard stops are. You know, if the financial system's down for a week, what does that look like? How long can you go before you absolutely have to have it up? Um, and, and that across, just using them as an example, but across all the, all the venues and what that looks like. So, um, and then, like you said, moving to online learning, what does that look like for us? How long can we, can we run in online learning? Can we run well, online learning? Online. It's all your, your data and, and computer so, so in most cases, in this case, they found that Google was not effective. So, Teachers have a personal device at home. They could log into Google, Google Meet, a Zoom account, um, Canvas, and still be able to, to, to make that work. So there are definitely services that we don't host or house. We house that our- we have access to. Yes, that, but we have access to. In our case, we have a single sign-on client called ClassLinks. That's how all of our students log in to all of those things, and if that was down, that could cause us a lot of problems. So it's making sure all your eggs aren't in one basket. So 
diversifying. <laughs> And then, and then just the, like we talked about before, what's my role in an incident? A lot of times it's thought of as just, this is an IT thing, this is gonna be an IT, but it will affect the entire district and reach out into our community. And so just having an idea of what that, um, you know, what that's gonna look like for you and, and that it, there are gonna be roles to be played um, for all employees and people at the district. So, yeah, I know we, we threw a lot at you and we went way over time, um, but do you guys have any questions? You just have to be able to think like a criminal, right? Yeah, yeah. I want to see the movie version. I think this would be a great movie. Robert, you could be the narrator and like, <laughs> meanwhile. <laughs> so what, is the state giving you guys any resources? Does they give districts any resources? Because there's the state cybersecurity As of right team. Now, and I know they, I've been to some of their briefings before. So right. But I didn't know if they helped school districts or only. So the, the Utah Education Network has a security, a cybersecurity specialist. And, and so he's been, you know, conducting monthly meetings. Here are the threats. Here are the things. But that's about the limit that we've had. Okay. One of the things that they have talked about is funding positions like Casey's. We've been doing that on our own yeah. to protect ourselves. Most districts are starting to hire somebody. But we're still looking for that funding from the state. Today we were in a meeting with not the State Office of Education or the State Board of Education, with the state capital, so just think different, the state auditors, and there's a, a lady there, her name's Whitney Phillips. And she left USBE to go and do this position for all government entities. And they definitely looked like they were going to start giving us a few more resources. Okay. Um, especially down the lines of uh, penetration testing and some other things that would help out to know where our weaknesses are. Where, be where are our backups stored? Are they, right. are we? This is a public meeting, Danielle. Well, I know, but <laughs> are they, are they, are we paying a third party offsite or are they air gapped on a standalone? So we do have a small air gap. Okay. We do have the the critical things air gapped to a undisclosed location. Okay, that's Seriously. fine. That's all I want to know. <laughs> it's way offside. But but it's you know, could we do more? Yes. Well, I'm just thinking the state too could our, our most start providing a place for districts to do backups or other and, additional support. And, and UEN does support that to a certain extent. Okay. Yes. So that's not the state. That's the Utah Education Network, but it's state funded. So okay. Yeah. Yeah. Great job. And there are there are more and more um, talks about what they can do and what would be effective to offer from the state level. So okay. we are seeing more and more of that yeah. Yeah. come down. So. Thank you, Casey. Thank you, Robert. Very informative. We appreciate that. That was great. Thank you so much. Very informative. Thank you. So did any of you get uh, Bridget Gerard's hack? So Thursday, yes. Bridget Gerard, president of USBA, got hacked all of her national accounts, all of her school boards. I I was able to I I received it. Her. I did. I called her because I know her well, and so I've been dealing with the Davis board because I had the a few tracking things, but it's everywhere. Yeah. Well, Casey, real quick, uh, President, um, if they have a BESD account, our board members do. If they get something that looks suspicious like that. What are they supposed to do? I'll let you explain that. Yeah, if you, if you could send it on to uh, suspect at bsd.net. Forward it to uh, suspect. It. Yeah, and, the, and that particular e email address goes to multiple people in the IT department, so it's less likely to get dropped. If you see something that seems fishy at all, yep. then if it's on your BESD account, then send it to... Yeah, send it our way, and we, we can take a look suspect. at it. Suspect. Suspect, yep. yep. You're welcome to send it to me individually, too. What's the whole website? Suspect at BESD. If you start typing in... Casey, suspicious. could you send that out to all of us? I think that sure. would be better so we had we can do that. made sure it was correct. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> send it back to him. Yeah, if you could yeah, just send it, I, I you could send it, it to all it. board members and we'd know exactly what to do. Sure. Okay, in case yeah. that happens. Thanks, Casey. I have one more okay, question, thank Casey. Thank you, Casey. So since students all have their own emails, usually, too, are we training students and giving students security education Not, on um, phishing and... Not compromising their accounts? Not at this time, no. We're not, uh, we're not doing anything specific on the phishing 
um, attached towards students. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, with the students, I know a lot of different <laughs> kids sign their emails up with a bunch of different, like, like Canva and stuff. We have accounts through them. So I know a bunch of students will get, like, promotion emails from them, and I don't think they're well-trained. Like, there's a bunch of, like, my friends, we've all taken computer classes, so we know exactly what to look for that stick out for it. But I know there's a bunch of students who avoid those kinds of classes who I don't think they could tell the difference between a real email and a scam. So Okay. And that, yeah, I think that's fair. That's something I, I think the question would be, what would be the best way to reach the students? Um, would it be through the same method, or would it be... And, and then to provide that training for them as well without disrupting class time. I think that becomes um, one of those, one of those uh, difficult okay. questions, but something definitely we could consider Absolutely. And, and figure out a good way to train and see if we can work that into curriculum somehow too okay. um, as part of an inter internet safety course or something. I know there's a lot that needs to be done mm -hmm. with internet safety as well. So, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, definitely okay. something we need to consider. Thank you, Casey. Yeah, Appreciate thank you. that. Thank you, too, Robert. Okay, we'll go on to um, our mission, vision, values, goals, and portrait of a graduate uh, superintendent. And also, he's going to do the organizational chart. So we'll do both of those together. Okay. Um, up on the wall, you'll see um, our newly updated <coughs> mission, vision, and values um, statement. Um, we worked through last year to uh, every so often, every couple of years, we work on this. We brought it to uh, our, our principals. They took it to, you know, their staffs and whatnot, and we talked about it. And Keith, you've got that up there. You, you'll see another thing that we added to this is you've heard mention uh, portrait of a graduate in Utah. And uh, portrait of a graduate is uh, a push that this, the USBE made to try to um, emulate what it means to be a graduate of the school district that you're in. And so it doesn't mean that you, uh, you know, you're, Senior year, you have this many credits, and you um, were able to pass those classes and graduate. And, and so what we did is we actually got on the USBE's website, and you can go through this process, type in their search engine, port, portrait of a graduate, and then you look at the competencies um, for graduation. And um, if you look at the portrait of a graduate up there and you see the QR code, you can put your phone on it, and this is something that we thought would be kind of catchy, plus the QR code made it way too big. But what I've done is I've get, given you this handout. If you look at that, uh -huh. it's, and we called ours, our um, portrait of a graduate the Box Elder Way. And there's a variety of names throughout the state. I know um, uh, they call, um, Iron County School District calls theirs uh, the Iron Eight. And there's just a, a bunch of different names that they, they named them. We named ours the, the Box Elder Way, with W-A-Y being the key phrase there. And as, as we look at that, if Keith, do you mind getting on the web page? You can, you can look this up on, on the BESD web page, and I can, we can let everybody see that while we're talking here to see how we came up with uh, the way, W-A-Y, as our... Uh, It should, should be um, the Box Elder Way. Is it up there? No. Okay, yeah. Where might it? Maybe it's under the, it might be under the board. I know it's up there, but if you can find it in your, in your Google Docs, and we'll explain it to him. I'll make sure tomorrow that's, that's up there under that. But as you look at it, as Keith's looking for that, for the W of, of the way, we went with wellness, and as we all know, mental wellness is huge, physical, mental, social, emotional, and resilience, and, it, and it, in the state's um, USBE's webpage, it talks about K5 configurations, this isn't, and then 6, 9 configurations, and then 10, 10, 12 configurations, and in wellness in these areas, this is what a student is, some of the um, knowledge, skills, and dispositions that we're trying to help our students learn as they go through school. Not just reading and writing and arithmetic, but skills and knowledges and, and abilities to do things. And I'm not going to read those, but as you can see, we looked at that aspect of it. The A of the word way is academic mastery. So mastery, critical thinking, problem solving, lifelong learning. And you can see the K-5, what we hope kids can do in the kindergarten through fifth grade, then in 6-9, and then in 10 10, 12. And then lastly, you, and um, 
we looked at honesty, integrity, responsibility, and personal growth. And so at the end of the uh, uh, student's 13-year you know, career, and it's longer if they go to preschool here, but if they're kindergartners, they have 13 years. Keith, uh, Keith has that up for uh, probably for the, I suppose the folks at home now can see that, Robert, is that correct? And, and so uh, I'm going to make sure I, I thought that it was underneath the district. It's under the district, and then if you go to BESD mission values, then there's another drop down, okay. and it's under that. Right underneath that. So if you go to district and then BESD mission vision values, and then there's another drop down, and then that mission, that one right there, that opens under, up to that. It probably needs to be more. Yeah, we need to make it a little bit, right. There's and then a, I think you can click on boxled. Yep, very good. Okay, we'll we'll try. Yep. Yeah. So, so um, the you, the honesty, integrity, responsibility, and personal growth. So in in essence, what we're saying is, when you walk across that stage in May, um, the end of May, that you're not just walking across with a bunch of facts and knowledge that have been basically crammed into your head for the last 13 years. You actually have a lot of skills and abilities, dispositions, and and that. You're going to leave our system ready to go out into the world and, and face it with uh, success. And I think with having Alyssa here, you can see some of these words and you can see some of those things. Do you, do you feel like you've learned some of those things that we're talking about? I have definitely learned a bunch of these. <laughs> okay. And I know a bunch of students at our school that definitely got involved yeah. and getting involved in like the clubs and the sports stuff and they teach us these yeah. things too. I think the hive mentality is a lot of what the way mentality is, is the same thing. Can you, can you list off what the hive mentality is? Honesty? Honesty, in integrity, integrity, vision, and engagement. Engage, very good. So yes. that's, that's something that, uh, um, you know, they've been pushing the, the hive mentality at Box Elder High for, I think, I want to say three or four years. You probably, it's probably been there the whole time you've been there, I suspect. I think, okay. So that's uh, uh, our, and our mission. I've said this before in this meeting. I'll say it again. I sat in Carbon School District for six years, and behind the, the board on raised letters was the mission. And I can't tell you what that was after six years. I can tell you here that Box Elder School District is going to ensure high levels of learning for all students. And I wanted to point out that our discrimination and our harassment free is part of that. We've got to make sure all of our kids feel safe. So first of all, they can be safe so then they can learn. So with that, I, uh, oh, I also shared with you our C statement, uh, our C initiative. And on the back, well, I don't know if it's the back page. I don't know how you say which the back is, but you can see the mission, the vision. You also have the QR code and then our values and collective commitments. And this is what our, our principals report every, every uh, work session that we have and you know we, we're still we still talk about strengthening professional learning communities expanding student connections and elevating employee appreciation and we feel like if we do those three things we're going to have successful and knowledgeable young people who can go out in the world and, and be very successful okay okay perfect the next one is um, the organization chart and this year probably had the most changes on it with retirements and people leaving our district and changing up a little bit how uh, we organize the school district. Uh, you can see, uh, I think that's also on the, the BESD webpage, Keith, if you, if, and I don't know if that would fit in there. It's a big, it is a big document. But you can see the Board of Education is at the head of everything. Then um, for those of you who know or don't know, the Board of Education's uh, one of their main responsibilities is to hire, and I hate to say this, but fire the superintendent and, and the business administrator. That's the two positions that the Board of Education directly uh, affects. Then all, uh, you can also see all board policies um, uh, is what, uh, how the school, school district is ran by the Board of Education. And then you, as you go down through, you can see the superintendent's position is there uh, with Marcy Hatch as the, the uh, administrative assistant. It's got the two assistant superintendents, Keith and Heidi Joe. We have two executive directors. Uh, Mark Taylor is the executive director of personnel. And then uh, Catherine Allen is the executive director of um, SPED, special education. 
And you can see as we go through, we've added to this list this year, Ashley Nelson, who has become our literacy specialist after uh, Lisa Jensen retired. And then Megan uh, Bushnell has become our equity slash student services director after uh, Jackie Whitaker left. Is there one more new position? I think not. Is that right? You two are looking down. You're supposed to say Mark. Mark did I say? I, I don't think I did say Mark Taylor. Okay, Mark Taylor, our HR executive director. So, Oh, also Bonnie retired. Bonnie Young retired. And I think I've mentioned this before, but we hired Rachel Lott. And Rachel Lott was a nurse with us for several years. Left to become a, is she a neat, nurse practitioner? A nurse practitioner. And she went with the specific idea to get all of her training in mental health and family, family services. And she wanted to come back here. Because when she left, she felt like she needed more to come back and help. And so we have a person that can actually discuss with students, as long as they have permission from their parents, just about anything mental health-wise or physically. And she can also prescribe, as long as the parents are involved. And the, the process is to get them hooked up with Beverly Mental Health and any kind of wraparound services that we can. And so we're very fortunate to have her in there. And so. I thought with the update, it'd be good to share this with you, and, and you can find this on the web page. Keith has it up. That is underneath um, the, the district, and it says organization chart. So there you have it. Any, any questions? Okay, excellent. Yeah. I just said that's a lot of stuff okay. going on. Yeah, it is. It is really fast. Great job. So thank you. Okay, thank you for both of those items, Superintendent. Okay, uh, now we'll have our monthly financial report, Dave Roberts. Great, so um, I've highlighted a couple items and if you guys will look through there, you'll also see some other items that are higher in percentage uh, as far as expending. Uh, um, and those, most of those have to do with three things. First of all, uh, lease re renewals, subscription renewals, and uh, dues that are usually uh, uh, do in professional associations, and so that's why a lot of those areas that you see um, are over the percentage of what we've already uh, passed through as far as a budget year. They also, too, um, if you'll look um, specifically, um, I didn't highlight it, but I do want to bring it to your attention, back down on uh, lines 179, uh, most by this time, on average, we're somewhere between 4000 to 10000 in our state uh, revenue. I just want to thank everybody that's been drinking, because that's liquor tax, and that's why we have $330,000 in there. Um, and then also, too, just let you know, on line 194, where we've already expended uh, 58000 of our $25,000 budget, that's because we brought, bought a new software this year uh, for our nutrition services. That is all inclusive. Instead of splicing three software programs together, we have one that will handle uh, inventory, uh, point of sale, and our menus. Any questions? Okay. Okay, thank you, Dave. Appreciate that. Uh, do we have any board committee reports this past month? I have one I'd like to. Okay, Nancy. So on September 21st, Bridgerland is having their family and friends open house. It's from 5 to 8 p.m. at the Logan or at the Brigham facility rather and it is so much fun. They had one in the spring and I took my uh, five, three and one year old grandsons and you go through the, the classes, they, the cosmetology people, they painted the little boys fingernails, they did facials, <laughs> they did massages, the, they had some wellness things we were doing. Tai Chi and yoga, and I had a three-year-old that does downward dog like nobody's business. Um, anyway, it's just fun. All the students are providing the services. If you don't know, they have a tremendous massage program, and you can get massages for $25 for an hour, and they're wonderful, and you can do them at any time, so put that on your list. But this is all free. There's food. It's fun. Take your kids. Like I said, the five, three, and one-year-old had a ball. Um, up in the automated technology one, they had some computer games and stuff they could play. They've got some uh, digital uh, VCR, or not VCR, but virtual reality goggles that they play. It's a lot of fun. Last year, they scheduled it the same week, or in May, 
as our, as our um, 5K that we had. So we didn't have as many community people there as we've had before, and they really missed out. So I take your friends, tell your neighbors. It's a great time, 5 to 8 on September the 21st. Now, what's the date and uh, September September the 21st. And just at Bridgerland here. Oh, okay. Oh, is it so, here? Yeah, it's here. Okay. I said Logan. I apologize. Slip of the brain. Um, it, excuse me? Oh, we may have. You should we may have. have. They I think we did. The You're parade. right. I think we yeah. did. But I we just did. wanted to tell you, it's, it's more fun time. than the invitation looks like. <laughs> okay. It's, I mean, it was, That's good. It was, it was just a great time. Good deal. And we, we sp they showed up at, my kids showed up at five, and we spent the whole time, in fact, they kind of said, Time to go home. You have the colored T-shirts. I mean, it was a, it was a big deal. Fun. So go. It's fun. Okay. Sounds great. Okay, um, Alyssa. We know that uh, student board member report. You probably don't have a report this month, but I'm going to tell this. Have the superintendent tell you what that entails. Okay. Okay. What we found is Michaela Morris, who was the representative last year from Bear River High School. She would reach out to Box Elder high school student council okay and so uh, I'd, I'd like you to see if you can find out who their student body leadership is reach out and get some ideas from them and then of course you'll be in contact with with box elder high's student council and anything that you know that's going on that's kind of unique you know take two or three minutes each each month and tell us that, you know some neat things that are going on at box elder high but you're also representing both mm -hmm. sides of the school district so you'll get to know them a little bit will be kind of fun for you and I believe you got a letter from Michaela. Did you have you gotten that yet? Okay, we'll have to. We I, I talked to Marcy. Marcy's my secretary. I have the one that was right here. I don't know. Yeah, that's it. probably okay. it. Okay, yeah. Sorry, okay. I haven't. Michaela Morris I've was been our. Talking, so. in, in, in another year from right now, you're, there's going to be a, a letter from you to the next person, and that and Michaela is probably going to give you some good information on okay. what to expect, on uh, what to you know, do and, and how to be, to be part of it. I'll tell you right now, on January 4th and 5th, uh, you're invited to go with one of your parents down to uh, Salt Lake to the Utah School Board Association Conference. And it's a great experience for you. And, and you know, because you're a student, we, we require you to take one of your parents because mm -hmm. you're down there a couple of nights. And so we'll, we'll just look forward to you being part of it. And, and we'll quite often, if we have a big discussion about something, we'll all of a sudden go, well, let's find out what a student thinks about what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And you're very valuable, and, and I know this board thinks highly of what our students tell us. So anytime you have questions, you know, call, call me. Marcy, you've talked to Marcy, I think. Mm -hmm. Marcy's my secretary, and she's a great point of reference. And talk to Mrs. Kent, and uh, we'll look forward to hearing from you each month. Okay. Thank you. Hey, board chair, wait. Yes, yes. Would, just cu curious, first of all, we'll find out very quickly who your favorite parent is in January. And second of all, would it be appropriate to just ask Alyssa just to introduce herself, tell her some of her likes and dislikes, what focus she has, and Absolutely. those kind of that things. Absolutely, that's great, Alyssa. Great. Okay, um, so at the high school, I'm involved with FBLA. This is my third year doing it. Um, I'm also a state officer for that, so I get to go around the state interacting with different high schools. And I get to help with like our big competitions and conferences. Like in October, we're about to have like our big fall leadership conference. So I'm giving a presentation for that, and I'm super excited. Where's, um, where's that at? It's down in Utah Valley. Okay. I think it's at their conference center. I'm not. I can't remember the exact name okay. of it. Um, yeah, I'm involved with the Youth City Council. I am a council member for that. This is my second year being a council member. So for that, we go around, do our service projects. We always get a bunch of calls. Usually, like we just helped. I probably put in like 20 hours of service for Peach Days, and I always love doing Peach Days. It is so much fun. <laughs> um, I'm on our cross-country team. I'm a captain for that, too, and so I actually just got back from a meet, so that was fun. And then, oh, um, I'm trying to think of what else. Mainly, oh, I work at Twisted Sugar, too. That's always a party. It's pretty easy. <laughs> and by the way, you can take both of your parents, but usually... And before we've had both parents go, so yeah, they're both welcome. Got it. 
Um, so my parents are Carolee and Josh Lyman. You probably saw my mom. She was sitting up here taking pictures. <laughs> and then my dad used to work with the city. He was an officer here. He was also the school resource officer at the middle school a few years ago. I can't remember how. I was like, Mikam was there. <laughs> um, yeah, but he went down to work with UTA police officers now. Well, thank you. Thank you, Alyssa. You're a busy girl. That's great. <laughs> Great. Okay, now we're going to go on to um, a board discussion items on two policies that uh, have been brought to our attention that we wanted to discuss this evening. Um, policy 2160, Building and Grounds Rental and Supervision, and Policy 6018, Community Use of School Facilities. Superintendent, do you want to... Well, I, I know that? Brian, uh, you know, it has yes. people reach out to him about that, and so I we got these policies together, plus... Um, Keith, once again, if you could if you could go to the web page and look at departments, and then I think it's the business office where it has the rental forms, and you know we could then just explain how. And then I think we, if I understand things right, we've got a unique situation with with Foothill because we don't have a principal that. Yeah, maybe just a little bit bit of background on how I reached out to the superintendent. It was I've had some community members ask. Um, you know, we built the, the nice new uh, school, um, Golden Spike, and during the summer, um, you know, it sits there, it looks beautiful, but it doesn't get used. Uh, and, and we're talking mostly about the, the requests I've gotten is about the exterior, the grounds, the grassy areas, the um, basketball standards and those kind of things. And, and then Foothill, um, the the community members that live around there are very appreciative that the district takes good care of it. Um, there were some issues with weeds growing along the fences that was a concern, and I talked to the superintendent about that, and they immediately took care of those. Um, but the community sees you know, the, these beautiful grounds and well-kept uh, grass not being used. And so as I reached out to the superintendent about that, um, he sent me these two... Um, <clears throat> Um, policies, but I don't think it, they really address use of, you know, can the community come and uh, play ball on the grassy area? Um, specifically, right now, Foothill has a do, do not enter, do not trespass. So the community walked by and says, do not trespass, and well, I think ground. So anyway, that's yeah. kind of what started the conversation, and so I thought it would be good as a board to discuss you know wh what our feeling as a board and, and establish you know what um, what we as a board feel we should do across the district in those circumstances well, I appreciate you you know starting this conversation because uh, right now we've kind of got foothill on mothballs and I you know I'd like to maybe have that discussion partly in the October 4th it is the fourth isn't it uh, work right. session right. and talk a little bit more about what we need and want to do at foothill um, Part of the reason superintendent we, yes right now for Wednesday for our day of service my entire wards out there weeding and cleaning up and working oh, very good. The young men young women it's our Wednesday night activity okay. At Foothill. So, because yeah. that is in our that is in our ward boundaries yeah. mm -hmm. okay and so we are all out that's awesome we're, so the fact that the district apparently just did something's like well it's gonna be a whole lot easier than what we saw when we looked yeah. last week yeah <laughs> but so we are so we yeah. are there tonight one of, one of the problems we have had is both uh, Mountain View, not that it's now our property, but Foothill and Mountain View both had some vandalism and some break-ins, broken glass, uh, people entering. So we're trying to do the best we can to keep people out while we're trying to decide what to do. And we get calls that Mountain View's broken in, we say, call the city. But uh, that's a nice one. But Foothill's something that we've got to make some decisions on, and we'd like to talk to you about you know what leadership thinks that we're, we're looking at with that. But I... I do think we need to look a little bit closer at, you know, during the day or something. We could have somebody, you know, in the evening, maybe. But they should be able to use that grass. That's because there's just not enough grass in this world, and we need to figure out how to do that. And everywhere else, you have a principal you can get a hold of. There, we really don't have anybody, you know, that's per se in charge of Foothills. So we can work on that. If the board members remember several years ago that this issue came up at uh, the middle school, um, Box Elder Middle School, where the, the large grassy area, um, the district posted signs around, you know, not to use it, keep out. 
and we took those down and said the community ought to be able to use yeah. that. So similar kind of thing. You know, we, we had to establish some um, district-wide policy that that the those who manage those facilities understand what the requirements are and what our expectations are. Okay, we'll we'll be glad to review that and because it in uh, that first policy. Let me see. My just computer went to sleep. Um, that 2160, I think both of them in the first paragraph, it talks about the fact that these grounds are the taxpayer's property. And so we need to try to make them as accessible as possible while still protecting them. So we'll take that into consideration and definitely come up with some, some ideas on how to try to do both. Superintendent, on that same line, I've had people ask about the tennis courts and things, especially during the summer, being able to utilize those. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll look, we'll look at that as well. I know Brigham City approached us and, and about the tennis courts and then changed their mind on, on that. So, yeah, sure. I was gonna say, are they, <clears throat> are they unlocked or are they locked? I'm pretty sure they're locked. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we need to look at a time when we can have them open and still you know, maintain the sanctity, I guess, for lack of a better word of, you know, the nets and just everything else, so. But I do agree. There's just that fine line, and we've we're probably when we have something new that nice, we're we're probably way over protective. There's no doubt. Well, my my only concern would be, and, and this is as a former principal, are are we if something happens while they're on our grounds, are we liable for that? Um, that would be a concern I would have. I know you can put signs up that say you know anything that happens, right. you know, and that I don't know how much that covers. Yeah, it's pretty, you know, especially if it's playgrounds and things like that. That's that's always scary. Yeah, consult with our attorney on yeah. how we'll work how on we that. Best work that. Okay. okay, thank you. And I just wondered also, I, I know when I was a principal, we always had to have a, an employee there from the school to supervise. And that was really hard because some employees, you know, they're done at the end of the day and they don't want to come back and supervise or do it on a Saturday or whatever. So I think that should be addressed as well. Okay. Okay. Very good. One more thing is uh, my uh, neighbor said that they used to go a long time ago at the high school and use the track to, to walk and things like that, and now it's uh, fenced off. So that's another I, amenity. Do you know that if I've that heard. is correct or not? If it's fenced off? The high school the track? The track. Well, it's been locked down because of construction. construction. But I do think. When everything was sort of yucky, <laughs> the bleachers were awful, the track okay. was... We let cement, everybody have at it. And the, and the tennis courts were behind the football field. It was like a free-for-all. <laughs> and people could do whatever they want, and kids were doing... Yeah. And it kind of showed. And I wasn't saying it was just people using it. But over the years, I think there's sort of this idea of we have really nice stuff right now. And what do we do... Um, to let know, people use it I know and that, keep it nice. For example, the Bear Center... You know, at six to nine, but guess what? We pay for someone to have supervision there. So, I mean, if we were to come up with something that would be open to the public, perhaps we should do something on this end to help supervise a facility if, now again, there's certain things that doesn't matter, but you know, how many people are gonna be on the track? Well, we got about two more months and then that's probably not gonna happen until spring. But anyway, those are all, yep. anyway. We can take a long, Good long look at that. I, but I think it's a it's a great it's a great question, and um, you know if it's not fenced, it feels a lot easier to say it's open to the public. But if it is fenced, then who's going to open yeah. that fence? Who's going to lock that fence? Who's going to monitor that right, fence? And so, have a Sue? comment, David. Yeah, that's that's a good that point. Is, that's a point. Good, good part point. of it. And can I just mention another point too? Something like the tennis courts. Um, you know, if we kept those open during the summer, they're they're not as visible uh, during the summer months as they would be during the school year because we do have people that utilize them from the stu from the schools uh, during the school year. But during the summer, we don't have people uh, employees per se that uh, you know visually see those on a regular basis, and so the upkeep and vandalism, any of those kind of issues that might arise 
would not be probably noticed as quickly during the summer as they would uh, during a school year. So that another consideration. Okay. Thank um, you. Sorry, with the tennis courts, I do know that the girls' tennis, they do go during the summer. Like, they'll have, like, their open practices. So there might be people there, but they go in the morning. So if they were to open later in the day, I don't think there'd be anybody. But in the mornings, yeah. and, like, after the nights, they could check then. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we're going to discuss this at our October 4th meeting, correct? Is that right? I think, I think okay. we're okay. going to discuss that. Okay, later. that's great. That's great. Everybody okay with that? We're good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so moving right along to our consent items, we just need a, a motion and a second to accept those. President, I'll, I'll make a motion that we approve the consent items this evening. Okay, Connie I'll Archibald I'll has made the motion, that. and Nancy Kennedy the second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, they pass. So now we go on to our, any suggestions for future board meetings? We okay there? I just have, um, yes, are, are we on the October 4th meeting? Is that when we're going to get the October 1 count and discuss yeah, that as well? Right. Okay. That's correct. Yes. Uh, the items that we discussed last month. Um, October 1. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. All that information. And we're going to discuss all that. Are we still meeting on the 18th? Yes. We are. Okay. So this is a work just meeting? Just work A work meeting. Okay. Yes. Thank you. October 4th is a work meeting, and then October 18th is our regular board yeah. meeting. We'll probably meet okay. across the hall in that in that room for the work session. On okay. The fourth. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, upcoming events: the USBA Fall Regional Meeting is September twenty sixth. That's six at Timbermine. I know Connie said she couldn't go, so she's going to Logan, and that's a possibility too. If you want to do that, I don't know what date the Logan. October eleventh. I know okay. because both those dates were. I changed the 26th, but both of them like, had something on. I was like, really? The two Oct times? Yeah, October 11th is the night before fall break. Yeah. That's when we moved the board meeting off of. Okay. So I will send out an email, and, and anybody who wants <clears throat> to go will make sure that we have a caravan that, that day to get us down there. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Um, we might want to put just on that upcoming events, just to note that it's January 4th through the 6th for the USBA okay. state meeting. Yeah. Okay, so we, we said that earlier, but. I was Very just going to ask who attended the fall leadership. Karen went. Did anybody else go? How was how was it? It was good. I was out of my comfort zone because I didn't have my people to oh, sit geez. with. But I learned a lot of new people. No, it's okay. Yeah. I I learned um, a lot a lot about different people throughout the the state. It was really good. Um, one thing that was a was a topic that was discussed in several of the breakouts was you know this um, AI. Chat GPT. Um, it's not necessarily plagiarism. It is a first time creation because each one of them are. So, how are we going to treat that in the schools? Yeah. So, we're hopefully, those, they'll. Yeah. We're having those discussions. Trying hopefully, to figure it out. people smarter than me will figure yeah. that out. But anyway, it was, it was okay. good. You were missed, but a lot okay. of good information. Thank you, Karen. Appreciate that. Um, Thanks for excusing me. It was, it was my wife's birthday Friday night, that, so I got to. So spend the day with her and take her out to dinner. So. All right. That's important. That is. Okay. On our uh, board handbook, um, what um, I've decided to do, and I've talked to Connie and the superintendent on this, the list that we made um, in our summer workshop, they correlate very closely with our board handbook. They really do. So, and, and through the USBA, they have suggested that we go through our board handbook, that we have a board handbook, and then we go through it yearly. And I just believe that we need to go through the handbook. And so we will kind of go through the handbook, and I think that will cover the list that we discussed in the summer as well. So I am going to write up a schedule on how we're going to go through the handbook, and I will have that out probably around the 1st of October uh, because we'll have our first discussion on the handbook on that meeting on the 18th. So uh, it won't be too stressful. We'll just make it uh, short and simple, okay? Just to make sure that we know everything that's in the board handbook. and. Uh, okay, thank you. Okay, so that's all we With have. That, unless there's I'll make other, a other, motion other to adjourn. Items. We're all good? Okay. Karen uh, Cronin has made the motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, uh, Nancy Kennedy has made the second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. <laughs>